Hi everyone, this is Aaron for Zolotech, and today we're going to continue the iPhone 4 tips videos. This video in particular is a video to get you ready for your iPhone. So if you have a Mac or PC, what you'll need to do is download and install iTunes, and we can do that by going to our favorite web browser, typing in apple.com, and clicking the iTunes button. Or more directly, you can just type itunes.com, and it will bring you to this page. Go ahead and click download iTunes, and get that installed. Now once you have that installed, and this is probably speaking more to people who have a PC that don't have to use iTunes as their main media player or pre-installed media player, uh, you'll definitely need to get that installed in order to move content onto your iPhone. So let's go ahead and open iTunes, and here we have iTunes and all of our media. Now, a lot of people are under the misconception that you must buy all of your songs in iTunes, and that's just not the case. You can actually import them from CDs, if you have already purchased your music, you can also import them from other locations. So if you bought it off Amazon or any other service where you purchased your music, you can actually import it directly into iTunes. So let's go ahead and check out a couple options before we talk about some more things here. Let's go over to iTunes and Preferences. And under Preferences, under the General tab, uh, there are Import CD Settings. So this will actually pull or rip your CD into iTunes and under the import settings we have a couple options such as encoding so the def default setting is AAC encoder at 128 kilobits per second that's a little low especially for me I like a little bit higher quality music so you can change this to mp3 or lossless and go to custom and up this to 320 kilobits per second for better sound quality. It will take up more room, but you'll have a better sound experience overall. The other settings I think you should be aware of is under the Advanced tab. They are a couple different location settings for your media. So the first one actually has to do with your iTunes media folder location. You can change this if you want to have your entire library on another hard drive, or you can keep the local hard drive location and by unchecking copy files to iTunes media folder when adding to library, you can actually keep files in multiple locations, uh, actually how I do. I have three hard drives over here, uh, minus the main hard drive, and what this lets me do is import uh, movies or music that I have saved here over into iTunes and leave them on that drive. Now, if I disconnect that drive, they will no longer work in iTunes, so it does need to stay connected. So those are the options you would want to be aware of uh, right off the bat. Now, as far as managing the iPhone, here you can see here's my iPhone on the left. I click on it. I have a few different options. The options I have um, are to manually manage music. And the reason you might want to do that is you don't want to import your entire library. You just want to import some of them. You also have encryption options, uh, prefer standard def videos. You can convert all your higher bitrate songs to 128 if you want to have more storage for other things and you can open iTunes when connected so pretty simple options and pretty straightforward now one of the things that you're gonna to want to be aware of is or may want to prepare for if you have a lot of applications you know that you want to buy you may want to head over to the iTunes store and purchase them now and the reason I say that is it will save you time in the long run than downloading them to your phone if they're large applications. So if you're going to purchase something such as, let's go to App Store here, if you're going to purchase something such as Navigon, which is a navigation app, that application comes in over one gigabyte and that takes a long time to download to your phone wirelessly and install. It's much, much quicker if you have it here on the, on the computer already and dump it over via USB cable to the iPhone later on. So if you know you have a set amount of applications that you are definitely going to buy, it will save you time in the long run and getting up and running once you first connect your iPhone. So that may help you out a little bit. One of the huge things you need to, to prepare for are your contacts. And now, <clears throat> depending on if you have a smartphone or not, will change how you do this. But basically, you're going to want to import your contacts to your address book or contact management system so that you can get them on your iPhone. Now, I, I tend to sync them via MobileMe because I have a MobileMe account. However, if you're on 
the Windows side, you can sync them with your Out Outlook contacts. There are multiple programs to do that. However, in order to get your contacts from your phone into iTunes or onto your phone eventually, you're going to need to transfer that. That could be via a cable or Bluetooth. If you're on a Mac, you actually have settings to transfer from a phone directly. So up here is your Bluetooth settings and you can see these were actually some old phones, the Motorola Pebble, and this was actually a Razer, and you can browse the device and bring over contacts. So that's very helpful. I'm not going to go into that now just because it's different for each phone, unfortunately. There is no standard per se. But to bring those into your phone, once you're on your iPhone page here, you go to your Info tab, and you have the option to sync your address book and all your contacts and your iCal calendars and your mail accounts and everything else you can think of here that you would that you may need for your iPhone. So that's really it. There isn't a whole lot of preparation that's going to go into an iPhone, but it may save you some time to purchase those applications ahead of time. That's really one of the best pieces of advice I can give you because uh, Navigon quite honestly took me hours to download on the phone on a wireless end connection. I have plenty plenty of speed. It's just something about installing large applications like that. It's much quicker to get them on the store and then move them over. So you can buy those, set up your ID. If you don't already have an ID, you'll see this account up here and you can go to your account and create one. You're going to want to create one anyway to download all the applications. So go ahead and do that ahead of time. Save yourself some work so when you get home, plug in your iPhone, you're ready to go. So if you have any other tips that you'd like to give the rest of the viewers, please feel free to comment below on something I may have missed that has helped you in the past setting up for your iPhone and preparing for your next iPhone even. Uh, thanks for all you subscribers. I appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, uh, please do so. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.